everyone. Welcome to the Katika Living Vibrantly Show. We hope you've had an awesome week. I know my week has been full of miracles, blessings, and joy. And we're going to continue that momentum here tonight on the show as we come to you live all the way from Tampa here from the Talkwad Studios. Tonight we're very honored and happy and privileged to have BC Adeshina. Did I get that right? You got that right. right. Hi, BC. Hi, how are you? Oh, it's so good. Great <laughs> to have you here. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. Oh, thank you. We're so happy to have BC, who's going to talk to us about her life. She's an amazing woman who's a stylist consultant. She's a custom jewelry designer. As you see this beautiful necklace, she's going to tell us a little bit about all her beautiful uh, work here that she's brought on the show to share with us tonight. In addition to that, she's also a spokesperson, and she's got a gig on the daytime show here in Tampa. So I can't wait to hear more about her, to learn about her, to be inspired by BC. So we want to share this with you, and we're grateful that you're here tonight to join us. So go ahead and grab your nice warm water with lemon, get nice and comfy, and here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back to the studio. We're here with BC Adeshina. 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 <laughs> We're so happy you're here to join us tonight. Thank you. It's my pleasure. I'm actually, I'm very honored. Oh, my gosh. We are honored. You Kitty, look at this work, guys. <laughs> she makes these beautiful pieces of artwork. That's what I call it. And let's start off with this beautiful piece. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this turquoise with silver? That's right. This is turquoise, and it is um, actually a Chinese turquoise uh -huh. from the mines in China. <gasps> and I make it with sterling <laughs> silver, uh -huh. which is like 925 points of silver. Right. And the chain is stainless steel. And um, it's a lariat, so you can just easily tie it. Wow, I love it. And adjust it to however high and however low you like it. Oh my gosh, it's, <laughs> it's just... one of my favorite pieces. Oh, and I'll tell you, it's 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 really becoming one of mine too. <laughs> It's just so easy to throw on with anything. It's kind of like upscale, low scale, whatever you pair it with. It kind of goes with something dressy or something casual. And and this is amazing. I mean, this is and you've made this all yourself. This yes, is all custom. Everything work. is custom work. I, it, it's so relaxing and it's so fun for me to do. And I love the beauty of the stones and just the <sighs> hardware of working with the metal. Right, right. So right. I, oh. I love it. I, each piece I do by hand. And with lots of love. And with lots and <laughs> lots of love. And with that note, I want to run your reel because your reel was unbelievable, guys. Get to know BC as we watch her right now. Hi, I'm stylist for BC Adashina of BC Style. And I'm here to. I'm thinking of exploring and bringing out her more hot mama side. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to stretch her comfort zone a little bit and just explore different looks. Not have tried yoga wear, active wear is so fashionable. Do you remember back in the day when it was just a plain old t-shirt or plain old shorts? And now things are so much more fashionable that people are wearing it for more than just working. This is huge this season. The high low, high in the mm -hmm. front, full length in the back, and also even the bright colors are really big. The purpose of shapewear is to give an overall flattering silhouette to our bodies. And there's a misconception that you have to buy it a little bit too tight and be uncomfortable in order to wear it. And, and those and shoes. Exactly. What Hot Mama doesn't own a pair of black stilettos. Those and are great. Put on some fabulous statement earrings. Now for more tips and wardrobe ideas, check out my fashion blog on bcstyle.com. Oh. 
amazing, amazing. Bravo, beautiful. Uh, thank you. Thank you very <laughs> so much. So I know that's a little bit of a synopsis of BC. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how did all this start? Because this is inspiring. I mean, you're not only a beautiful woman. I mean, you. you're so amazing as far as your beauty, your inside beauty, your physical beauty, also the talent that you have and being a spokesperson and working as a model and then having the TV exposure. Tell us a little bit how this whole story came together. Well, when I was younger, around 11 years old, I had a dream like so many other young girls to be a model. Uh -huh. And um, if you saw my bedroom at the time, I had it completely plastered with photos from magazines of oh. all my favorite models, <laughs> Naomi, Iman, Karen really? Alexander, you name it, they uh -huh. were on my wall. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And um, so I started... So they were the kind of your inspiration. Totally, at, at your totally. Um, you know, as a, a young girl, I was picked on a lot in high school mm -hmm. and junior high, but there's something inside me that said, you know, I'm beautiful, and yes. I think I saw modeling as a way to, as a self-validation and mm -hmm. also a way to show others that you see they think I'm beautiful too. Mm. And I wanted other girls who look like me right. to show them that we're beautiful. Absolutely. Um, because it was a kind of a time when um, African American girls with darker skin right. might not have been as popular. Right, right, so right. So I said, well, we need to change that. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that motivation, that mm -hmm. desire. The passion comes out. Mm -hmm. We are going to change this. Awesome. Right. So how did that transpire? Well, so what I did was is I went to all of the uh, model agencies in my area. Uh -huh. And oddly enough, they were telling me, well, you know, your look is too exotic. And on the inside, I told myself, well, really a no is a yes <laughs> to waiting exotic. to happen. I would think that would be a huge, like, come on in. Well, but at you, the time, at I the time, it mm -hmm. just really wasn't the norm. Right, right, right. Um, but I refused to accept no. Good. And so I sent photos off to Chicago, and they were not that interested. So I said, well, forget it. I'm going to Europe. And that's Good exactly what I did. I just you saved did? up my pennies, and I went off to Paris, and I didn't even have a place to stay until I got there. I don't know who oh, I, I thought I was. I love it. And how, old, how old were you? By the time I went to Paris, I was 21, but before then... Um, mm -hmm. let, let me back up a little bit. I sent my photos to all the local choreographers. Since uh -huh. no agency was ready to sign me, right. I sent it to directly to the people who hired models. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I just happened, um, by the grace of God, the top choreographer saw my picture and he said, I love your look. I'm booking you for everything. Oh my god. Then I had my choice of every agency. Wow. Just that first step, mm -hmm. that first yes. Yeah. <gasps> so I just never really had that quitting spirit. I just thought, love you it. know, where there's a will, there's a way, there's a reason that I want to do this so bad. So if the agency wasn't going to give it to me, someone who's making the decisions will. Right, right. So, and when I figured out that, <clears throat> I figured I, once I had at least done everything I could in my own power, mm -hmm. then I just left it alone and said, okay, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. If right. it's not, it's not. At least I can rest knowing I did everything I could. Right. And so, apparently, it was meant to be. Um, I, w I did all the big shows mm -hmm. um, in Minnesota and Chicago and now then, this is after Paris? No, this was before. Oh, this is before so Paris. So then I, my ambition grew, and I thought, well, I want to go to Europe. Mm. So I uh, went to Paris, and the first time I went was with a friend, mm -hmm. and um, got an agency right away, and did um, some fashion shows. And um, <clears throat> But it, what's so funny is I didn't have a visa. Uh -huh. And when I called the consulate and I said, you know, I do I need a visa to come to Paris? Uh -huh. They heard my American accent and they said no, because Americans, if you're a U.S. citizen, you didn't need one. Oh. So when I got there and they saw that I had a Nigerian passport, they were ready to send me back <gasps> immediately. And I about lost it. And thank <laughs> goodness that my friend was with me and she said, no, show them your date book because I had yeah. a personal invitation by Rifat Azbek. 
Oh, and wow. um, as Adina Alaya mm -hmm. to come there. Wow. And um, so when they saw that, this is how important fashion is in Paris. When they saw that I had a personal invitation by those designers, wow. they That's stamped amazing. my passport and let me in. Without a question. Without a question. <laughs> They're like, oh, no, go oh, ahead. God. Oh, my goodness. That's <laughs> amazing. But at the moment, you felt... Like, what's what's going on? What's happening? It's like I didn't even get out of the airport, and they're ready to send me back to Minnesota oh before I got to do anything. And thank goodness I had my friend there with me because I was terrified if I right. showed them anything, they'd send me back. Right, right. Um, well, which they were going to do anyway. Right, right, right. So I had a blast there. I loved the wow. food. Wow, how long were you there in Paris? I was there um, about two months. Two months? Mm -hmm. <gasps> That's it was great. Awesome. awesome. It was great. Met some amazing people. Um, met some fabulous designers and spent some money because I yeah. love the fashions. Of course, yes. <laughs> I know. I look at you. you look so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. But even as I as I do in a, in the states, I always look for a bargain. Right, so I right. Found the bargain Good places there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine though in Paris. You'll have to write a book about that. <laughs> Oh, I tell you, <laughs> I've had some fun adventures. I never really thought about writing a book. Yes, but because I wouldn't. I've been to Paris, and I never thought of there would actually be locations where you can think, find things for oh, bargains. Oh, yes, definitely. Oh, I found the market. They have weekend markets, oh, yeah, and and the really? second air de mm -hmm. And um, you go there on the weekends. They all come out there. They bring samples of their store, and they mark them all down. Really? Yeah. Okay, so you guys heard that secret on the Katika Living Vibrant Show. Remember that. We'll have to post that later on on our website. <laughs> Secrets from BC all the way from Paris. <laughs> My mom instilled it. a long time. She said, you don't have to be rich to look rich. You there just you have go. to know how to shop. Oh, I love mom. Oh, I love it. That's so true. She's right. She's, mm -hmm. she's brilliant. So um, let's fast forward a little bit. So how did... The modeling then take place into, uh, which would be a natural progression to television. So how did you come to, you know, be a spokesperson and, and things like of that nature? Well, you would think that from being a model, I would go into wanting to be a spokesperson. Yeah. That's not how it happened. Oh, okay. okay. Um, after living out of a suitcase for so long, I finally, I told myself that when modeling stopped being really fun, then I was going to change my career. And I was at odds at finding out what do I want to do next. Right. And something said, well, do what you love, because then you never have to work a day in your life. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, well, what do I really love to do? What gets me out of bed in the morning if I didn't need the money? Shopping. Uh -huh. And I mm -hmm. thought, okay, but I don't have enough money to just <laughs> shop all day. And then something Listen. said, well, use other people's money. Well, there you go. Fashion styling. So that's what I did. Mm -hmm. um, I segued into fashion styling. And um, again, I believe that everything, my whole life, and has it was been such inspired. a natural progression for you. Because, it was such a natural, right? Progression. It wasn't anything you had to learn, or mm -hmm. it was there. It, it was, was there. innate. Oh, that's it is. Beautiful. So who knew that all my years in modeling was really preparing me for styling? Wow. That's um, awesome. I had friends that were. Uh, fashion photographers uh -huh. that used to ask me to help style some of their photo shoots. Oh. And they would also take pictures of me as a model, but I never thought that, that it would come in handy wow. as a second career. See, now with that in mind, and with what you said is a perfect segue to our next um, link, I'm sorry, video of you that we have for the fashion so um, video. So Chris, why don't you roll that?
Wow, that's awesome. So tell us about this video. I know it kind of showcases your work, so tell us a little bit about it. Well, the video showcases a lot of my fashion styling work that I did while I was at HSN, um, both as a staff stylist for them and also as a freelance contractor. Wow, that's awesome. So it's a lot of my work that I've done for print and mm -hmm. also for um, fashion shows and uh, for live TV broadcast presentations. Um, it, it basically everything. Wow. <laughs> Anything wow, having that, to do with fashion. That's <laughs> wonderful. I loved it. I mean, I loved that and I loved your 60 second reel about yourself and oh my gosh, it's just amazing. So now tell me how to all this, okay, so we went from modeling to fashion consultants, so how do we get back to TV? <laughs> well, with um, TV, because I was working in a broadcast environment, uh -huh. um, I guess I got bit by the bug. Mm -hmm. It was just something that became a part of me because I'd been in it so long. Right. And I was asked by a producer to go on air as a guest stylist. And mm -hmm. I was so nervous, but I thought, I can do this. Right, right. And I did it, and it was like, wow, this is really fun. So, so you I like the lights and the camera, the I action, did. right? <laughs> I did. So it's almost like I found my way back to that in front of the camera. Right, it right. And just a little different in front a of different the camera. different perspective, yeah, yeah. exactly. So it's almost like I was able to use the modeling and the styling into this new packaging. Um, it's like right. a new packaging. It's mm -hmm. so funny. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, it's just amazing how it all ties in together. It comes almost in full circle, almost, because mm -hmm. we guys still talk about the jewelry. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I want to get there. But so, okay, so then you went as a guest, um, as a guest host, host, host mm -hmm. okay. And so from there, did you continue working on television as well? Or did you, how did you get to the daytime? So well, while I was, um, I did the two spots as a guest stylist host, mm -hmm. and then I thought, hmm, maybe this is something I'm supposed to be looking into further, mm -hmm. um, because now I, at that time, I now had a, a, a taste oh. of what it would like to be a host. Right, and so now you're like, oh, I like this taste. Exactly. It's <laughs> like, hey, try this little piece this of candy. This is so in the family. <laughs> exactly. And so I thought, well... How could I do this? So mm -hmm. I went ahead, and this isn't right away. Uh, maybe it was about a year later. It's just I kind of put it on the shelf, and I thought about it. It came back to me maybe about a year later. Mm -hmm. And I thought, how do I break into this? How do I break into this? And I prayed about it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm very, very much a spiritual person. Mm -hmm. So I believe that my whole life is inspired by um, God directing me. Right. And um, so whenever... I'm at a crossroads. I just ask God, you know, is this what you're wanting me to do? How right. do I do it? Uh, sometimes it gives me the answer plainly, and sometimes he just says, go figure it out. Right, right, right. <laughs> and you're like, no, a map would help. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And sometimes the map is blank. Yeah. And he's like, I trust you. <laughs> just go figure it, it out. <laughs> that's so beautiful. And that's so important because I I'm glad you said that because you've been so successful in all these different areas of this beautiful industry. And yet you've had this spirituality, you've had this faith that you've um, gone back to and acknowledge that some things were guided mm -hmm. and you're still being guided. But at the same time, you're also part of that destiny. In other words, right. you're also writing. You're actually writing right. part of your life as you're exactly. being guided. So mm -hmm. I love how you said that because it's true. Sometimes we want the map. It's so much easier to say, hey, here, here's the map. Just follow. But really to to really evolve as humans mm -hmm. i think we have to be given that challenge right. to say okay i'm still guiding you but i want you to start writing exactly and um i call that just taking those leaps of faith yes that's beautiful and said. just trusting beautiful that said. um if this is the right direction he gives you signs right um and i'll, I'll and with my story you'll you'll see the signs um so what i did was i ran into uh, someone in the parking lot mm -hmm. who I recognized to be a famous radio show host. Mm. And so I approached her and I thought, okay, this is God putting this person in my path. <laughs> I have to seize the opportunity. That's right. And you I went to, to her and I said, are you so-and-so? Right, and right. she said, no, I'm not. <laughs> Needless to mm. say, I was embarrassed. Mm. She said, no, I'm not, but I get that all the time. I'm the other girl, the one on TV. And I said, oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is getting better. <laughs> And I told her 
point blank, I said, you know, I'm very interested in getting into hosting. Um, could you give me some pointers? Right. And right. she said, approach the networks and tell them that you're willing to work for free and that you'll come up with some story ideas. Well, all I heard was work for free. And I was like, see ya, you know. Right, right, right. Okay, right. Yeah. I don't know about that. Well, I think at that time, I just maybe wasn't willing to do what it took. Right. So I just thought, well, she doesn't know who I am. I don't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do anything for that. free. So, <laughs> that's a very natural reaction from 99% of us. Right. Really. Because we think, wait a minute, we've worked hard. Exactly. We've always been working hard, so this is our break. What do you mean work for free? That's, exactly. that's a good point. So how did she, that all come about? Well... Again, what I when I said um, that maybe I wasn't willing to do what it took at the time, uh -huh. um, maybe I wasn't mature enough in terms of my um, passion for it. Because later, again, maybe about two years later, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I started looking around on the internet mm -hmm. and started looking at different networks because by then the passion had grown. It was something I could not stop thinking about. Right. And um, I came across... The daytime show mm -hmm. and I remember going there one time as a model to do a show and I just remember having this very cool calm feeling of mm -hmm. that it felt like home mm -hmm. um, just as though I belonged there and I didn't know why I felt that way but I felt that way and so I just thought okay well you know it just didn't really read too much into it just right. thought it was a great feeling well, I went on their site, and because I remembered that feeling, I said, I'm going to go and see if maybe they need a host. Mm -hmm. So I looked up the producers' names, and I wrote down the name of one producer and um, sent an email. Right. And then I, and because I'm just one of those girls that, you know, got to go for it. I right. gave her a few days to get back to me. She didn't get back to me, so I called the phone number. Good, good, And good, I good. left <laughs> a message. All right. And this is what I mean by um, God preparing and working for me uh -huh. and, and guiding me. I did not realize that that was the producer who had asked me a years ago. Parking lot. To be, no, to be um, a guest stylist host. <gasps> On HSN, I completely forgot. The name didn't register. Oh, no. Yeah, and so she said, oh, I totally remember you. <gasps> she remembered She remembered me, and she said, we'd love to have you on. Can you come this week? And I was like, who is she? How does she remember right, how me? she remember And me? then she said it, and I was like, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and then, what's so amazing about it is that she remembered you. Yeah. Hello. So, <laughs> yes, I'm talking about divine intervention. Total divine yeah, intervention. Yeah, she's like, okay, check, got it. You can't make that up. No, no, no. You can't even plan for that. You can't plan you can't for that. You can't for that. <laughs> exactly. So that's what I mean about, like, sometimes you just have to step out in faith. Right. And then God gives you signs that you're doing, you're moving in the right direction. Right. And here's another example. Uh -huh. So I, on my first day of being on the show, I, the person in the parking lot was who I was hosting the show with. What? <laughs> I kid you not. And she remembered you too? No, this time okay. I remembered her. her. <laughs> and I could not resist to tell her the story. And I said, you're going to flip out when I tell <laughs> you this story. Great. I'm the one who approached you and I called you so-and-so. And, -so, and you said, no, you got to apply to these places and do it that. for free. And she's like, I am so glad. That, that you went ahead and kept pursuing it. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> so so now if we want to watch you on daytime, it's a daytime show on That's Tampa right. Bay, right? Mm -hmm. So what is, wh when are you on? Well, I'm a regular contributor, uh -huh. um, which means I'm not necessarily part of the staff, but I have, I'm, I'm family. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you said that. <laughs> she even paused. <laughs> That plays that pays a uh, a regular visit. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so about twice a month, twice, I'm okay, on there, um, and it's usually on a Thursday, which means I'll air on a Monday. Great. Um, and it's uh, we do what we call the week in fashion wrap up. Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, that's twice a month. Twice a month. So okay. it could either be the first or the second or the third or the fourth Monday of the month. Um, it varies. It varies. We, we switch okay. around. So. We, as uh, as your fans, you know, and, and me especially since I'm one of your fans now as well, how would I be able to know that? Would I be able to I post it on Facebook. Facebook. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. um, usually when it's the day of the taping, because we tape two mm -hmm. days out, I'll post it on Facebook and say, check, us, check me out. I'll be on daytime 
on such and such day, which will be the following Monday. Great. It's always at 10 a.m. Um, unless there's a listing that's different depending on your time of where you're located mm -hmm. uh, because it is national. Right. And um, so the times may vary okay. and the channels as well. Awesome. Um, so uh, here locally, it's 10 a.m. on Channel 8. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So now, okay, so now we're getting to this part where you've done this amazing work. So from modeling to um, fashion consultant or fashion stylist, mm -hmm. you like to be called, I'm sorry. Oh, and, well, and, and consultant, then, that's what I do as well. Okay, okay, <laughs> and then into the television world, and then this other passion erupts, or has it been there? So tell us a little bit about it. If you guys can really take a look at these beautiful pieces. Um, I don't even know where to start. They're all so beautiful. Wow. I'll start with one of my absolute favorites. Yeah. Where where it all began was, this girl loves big rings. <laughs> <laughs> I always love to purchase big rings. Yes. And I just thought, okay, I haven't really seen something as big and over the top as I really would like. like so uh, I said, well, let me make it. Why not make it? Why oh, my goodness. <laughs> If you can't find it, make I it. I love this will, this passion <laughs> behind what you want, what well, you want to see. Why I'm not do it? I'm you, again, it was another thing of divine inspiration because mm -hmm. I was literally sitting in the car mm -hmm. and a little voice popped into my head that said, start making jewelry. And mm. to me, when I hear, when I say a little voice, it's really not a little voice. No, um, it's, it's, it's a just big a, voice. It's a big voice, but it just was a soft voice. And I call it my God voice because... Wow. I know it's not myself talking to myself. <laughs> right, 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 right. And this voice said, start making jewelry. And I said back to the voice, I don't know how or where uh -huh. do I start? And the voice said back to me, just start making jewelry. And just I said, OK, it. I'll figure it out. And so that was a blank map that you that got. That was the blank map. <laughs> that was but the look map. from the blank map. Look at this. Like this beautiful, full, um, was that a fuchsia? This is yeah. an agate. Oh, agate. my gosh. Yeah, okay, One of so. my absolute favorites. And I made this, uh -huh. um, well, I cut the stone and polished it, and then um, started taking a silversmithing course at uh, a rock club. Right. <clears throat> and um, and I just eventually evolved my craft. Wow. And just beautiful. started developing. So I kind of, in a way, uh, with the help of some mentors, taught myself how wow. to make jewelry. Really? I've only taken one class. Are you kidding? No. Wow, and, these are just and then such just belong to rock clubs. <gasps> And just really? would tell them, this is what I want to do. How so do, do I do, do it? Do you get inspired by certain stones and that's yes. where the formation comes from? Well, it, play? what it happened was, is I went to a woman's home who was a dealer in semi-precious stones. Oh. And I needed to get some pieces for a commercial that we were shooting as, for, as a stylist. I needed right. to acquire right, them. Right. And I just fell in love by the vibrancy oh. of the colors. Yes. It Beautiful. was, it just... I just I was memorized by or I was mesmerized. I mean, each piece is just so uniquely done, it's handcrafted, time, uh, love. We were talking about a labor of love. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's show our viewers some of these beautiful and rings. This one is a turquoise ring. Oh, and, it's gorgeous! I mean, it practically covers my hand. Yeah, <laughs> but that's exactly the way I wanted it. Right. Because when I saw the stones, I thought it just gave me such a warm and Look happy at that. feeling. Look how beautiful that is. Oh, it's just gorgeous. So how much work behind something like this piece is? Like, for instance, how much if we wanted to commission you to do a piece? If you wanted to commission me to do a piece, I would say allow at least a week. A week, okay. Um, because it all, I hand select each rock. Wow. Um, because it's, a process. it's not something that Beautiful. I can buy in bulk. Right. Because I feel that the stones choose me. Mm -hmm. I look at them and they tell me what to make from them. Wow. Um, so the, your jewelry is actually showcased at two places in St. Pete. Yes. So um, tell us about where we can find your jewelry. Well, you can take a look at my website, bcadashina.com, and you'll see a variety um, of stones along with their meanings and the way that they're formed. Um, but to where you can purchase them currently is Cerulean Blue, which is located at 400 Beach Drive which is downtown St. Petersburg, Florida, mm -hmm. and also at Being um, Boutique, which is a fabulous store as well. 
and that is at 1575 4th Street North in St. Petersburg, Florida. And say your website one more time. And my website is bcadashina.com. And soon, um, it's still under construction, but soon you'll be able to purchase jewelry there directly also. Awesome. And there's a phone number also if, if you want, if they have questions to reach you. Yes, right. if you have any questions, you can reach me at 813-951-3008. Oh, awesome. Fa fabulous. So Or email me. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> tell, well, tell them your email address. Well, my email is bg at ashina at gmail.com. Great. So that's bg, my last name, at gmail.com. And that should be up. Chris, our producer, will take care of that so our viewers can have all the information at hand so that you guys can purchase and view not only her beautiful um, artwork. I, I call this artwork. It's just Thank beautiful. You. Um, work and but you get to know a little bit more about BC and her journey and how she's come to be this amazing lady today and before we let you go though we want to talk to you about the process I had asked BC to bring some of her materials to show us how she actually comes up with um, these pieces so she's going to take a part of the process and mm -hmm. show us today right well this is the very last step in the process keep on and what I have here is a piece of agatized coral. And I have formed, through soldering, the sterling silver. I call it the skeleton. And that's where I have formed the design, how it's going to um, encase the mm -hmm. actual stone. Um, it's a large stone, but that's why I like them. Yes. And so at the very end, after I've measured and formed the skeleton and I apply it to the stone, then I will wrap through the final pieces. This is a chain nose plier. And I will fold the individual. Like into like a prong. Like right? a prong, mm -hmm. exactly. And then this one. And I love how she's working with her big rings at the same time. That's right, because <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> That's right. You it's can just do a that. beautiful shot right here, guys. This is just amazing shot right here. And this is actually something that you could wear reversible. This could wow, be look the at front that. That is really, really back. sharp. That's and beautiful. This is what and what kind of stone front. is this? This is agatized coral from wow. Tampa. Oh, from Tampa. Look at that. Uh, BC, you are just one extraordinary, extraordinary lady. And I'm just so grateful that you were able to come and showcase not only your work but inspire us with your story with your journey and Thank I you. know that you've inspired our viewers um, I know a lot of women out there looking for their purpose and to hear you mention and and, and how you work through your path and how you uh, recognize where you were going and how you followed those steps and those voices leading you, <laughs> you know, the divine mm -hmm. inspiration leading you. So it's just so awesome to hear that from someone as successful and beautiful as you. And we wish you wonderful things in the future. We know you. you're going into this amazing, amazing world that you're already in. Thank you're just you. going to skyrocket from here. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I wish the same to you and to all of you out there. Just trust the voice that is leading you because it's not leading you anywhere false. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And to our viewers, thank you for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed our Katika Living Vibrantly show as we've showcased BC living vibrantly through her work, through her passion in her life. So we hope you get in touch with her and look at her pieces and find out more about her on her website, on her Facebook page, on the daytime uh, show here in Tampa. And all of you, we wish you a wonderful week, living vibrantly every day. Until next week, God bless, and we'll see you soon. Bye.